Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And again, welcome back to my 2004 GMC Envoy. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the ignition switch on your car. Now, the reason I'm replacing the ignition switch on my car is because I've had some electrical gremlins show up and the symptoms were that my car was just randomly shutting off in, uh, in traffic, um, you know, with or without the AC on, really no difference there. Now, when the car shut off, it wasn't like it was starving for fuel, meaning it did not slowly stutter, stall out, that sort of thing. It was an immediate shut off. And to me, that was pretty indicative of uh, almost an immediate electrical cutoff. So I'm going to show you guys the tools that you're going to need, and I'll show you how to replace this ignition switch. You will find your ignition switch behind the lock cylinder and underneath of these plastic covers. This is the ignition switch that I'm going to use. I picked this up at my local car parts store. This is a CarQuest premium brand, number CSA1039, and it looks just like this. Now you'll notice on the top of the ignition switch, there is this uh, gear and you're going to want to pay attention to the position that this gear is in when you take the old one out so you can put the new one in in the same position and i think this is about the right position you see there's a big gap in the switch right there in the middle and you're going to want to roll that just to where that big gap starts to go inside the switch itself now the tools we're going to need are real simple all we're going to use is a 7 millimeter and 8 millimeter socket, as well as a flat bladed screwdriver. Now, in order to get to the ignition switch, we're really only going to need to remove three panels. This bottom panel, this instrument cluster panel, and then the lower half of this kind of clamshell panel on the steering column. But the first thing we have to do is disconnect the battery. Next thing you're going to want to do is gently pry off this tilt lever for your steering column oh, there it goes <laughs> and then we're going to need to remove uh, these two seven millimeter bolts that are on this panel and then behind that there'll be some phillips screws um, for this instrument cluster panel and you also have two seven millimeter bolts underneath of the panel here and then once this panel is down you're also going to have two additional bolts um, at the very base of this panel here. So now that we have this bottom panel lowered and then the four bolts out of this lower panel, you can simply remove this panel, set it out of the way. Now we can get to this lower half clamshell cover for the steering column. Now to remove this lower half of the clamshell on the steering column, you will need a T25 bit. I forgot to mention that earlier, but my steering column does not have the T25 bolts in it. They must have fallen out. So we actually don't need it for this part of the process. And then the other thing you're gonna need to do are remove four Phillips screws to remove this uh, instrument cluster surround. And they are one here on the lower left. You've got another one here on the lower right. And then two right above your instrument cluster, one on the right and one on the left. All right, so I've got all four screws out of this instrument cluster bezel here, and I'm just gonna pull this kind of down and out of the way. Maybe up and out of the way. There we go. So now that we've got that instrument bezel surround out of the way, the only thing left we have to do is kind of pry apart these two half pieces that surround the steering column. Now I'm gonna set the camera down just because it's, it'll take two hands and I don't have a tripod, but what essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pry this open gently with a flathead screwdriver. And then while I'm prying gently, I'm just gonna kind of push these two pieces apart using my thumb and my index finger. And then that'll pop it open and then you'll be able to remove the uh, lower half of this clamshell piece once it's apart. So I got the lower half of this clamshell piece pried apart, and you can see there's some clips that are on both sides of the top and the bottom half, but once you get that pried apart, the bottom half just comes right off. Right here is our ignition switch, and to remove that, all we have to do is take our flathead screwdriver, and there are two buttons, um, two clips, one clip on either side 
or spring-loaded buttons that you're just gonna have to depress so you can remove this ignition switch. Just got the old ignition switch out and as you can see I did not have to remove this top piece of the uh, steering column cover and to remove this clip let me show you here there is a little clip uh, kind of a push button clip on the end of this connector what I had to do was just take a flat blade screwdriver when this was inside of the ignition switch housing right there and then just kind of wiggle this clip and the connector out and this guy came right out so the old ignition switch is on the left hand side and the right one or the <laughs> the new one is on the right hand side you can see the position of these of the of the gears at the top i'm going to have to move the gear on the new one which is here on the right just a little bit counterclockwise so that big gap is just inside of the ignition switch housing all right so now that we've got it connected we're just going to slide it up into the into the housing there and we're just going to listen for those clips to click in like that and again as i mentioned earlier it's just going to be important that we make sure the gears are lined up properly so that when we put the key in the ignition everything lines up where it's supposed to be and we'll go ahead and test that now before we put the battery in so we've got now when you're testing this this is not going to go back all the way so there's a button right here at the bottom push that in and turn it back all the way so we've got the key in turn it to the accessories on position and run and everything feels like it's supposed to be or it feels like it's where it's supposed to be in terms of that ignition gear now i've got the new ignition switch plugged in i'm going to go ahead and test it out before i put all the panels back on just to make sure that everything is working at least for the time being so here we go and we're going to check the functioning of the switch itself make sure each position is correct remember that little white gear that was on top of the ignition switch we're going to make sure the on accessories and then the run positions on the ignition work properly and then obviously really want to make sure that it starts up and runs with no gremlins showing up on the speedometer or anything so here we go all right so i do hear the fuel pump priming Okay, so again, uh, yesterday morning when I started the car up, it was really cold outside. And when I say really cold, I mean about 30, 32 degrees. Um, that's really cold for here in North Carolina. But what it was doing is it was it was really fluctuating. The the idle was uh, was fluctuating. The engine was running rough. Um, and then, as I said before, it automatically shut off. Not like it was starving for fuel, but like it was an automatic electrical cutoff. So as we can see right now, it is not showing those same symptoms. Um, so for now, I'm gonna say that this ignition switch was the likely cause of those electrical gremlins showing up. I wanted to mention to you guys that I have partnered with Emanuel Online and they have a sale that's gonna be running at the end of December where you can get 30% off any electronic manual for your car or truck. Be sure to check my link in the description below for 30% off from December 22nd through December 27th. And I'll have a link to that discount code down below if you guys are interested. I'm gonna call that a successful repair once again on my 2004 GMC Envoy. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you hadn't done so already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have you join the channel. As always guys, thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And don't worry, I'm not going to leave all of these access panels just laying around in my car. I am going to put these back the way they came off. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to show you guys this process. But basically, to reinstall these panels, just do the exact opposite of the way you took them off. Hope that was helpful to you.